Hello winning game fans, we are into the home stretch in the last quarter of the year, where surprisingly there are still more great games to come, so let's begin with Phantom Rose 2 Sapphire, a super stylish anime roguelite deck builder, but where it's different from your Slay the Spire clones. The way that cards are played is interesting, since you're not drawing random cards in battle, but rather managing their cooldowns as you explore a creepy manner and battle phantoms, and it's the sequel to a game from 2019, which was similar and has quite a distinct look, so deck builder fans, this one's for you. This next title had an outstanding prologue demo which was super popular, with the interesting part being that while it looks like Minecraft, Outpath is actually a clicker game in disguise. It is a chill base building title, in which you are doing survival game stuff like chopping trees, mining rocks and hunting animals, using the gathered resources to research and upgrade and to expand your facilities to grow your base. The blocky art style is very reminiscent of Minecraft, but where the flat 2D objects in the environment is weird and different, but does have a good cohesive look overall. It is about time clicker games get back into the spotlight again after all those vampire survivors clones, so fingers crossed it does well. Imagine a quiet world, ready to be connected. I'm usually not a voxel game person, but Station to Station has really changed my mind on it, since it is an absolutely gorgeous, relaxing city builder title all about trains and their stations. The little miniature world that the developer has created looks wonderful, even down to having voxel animals roaming the land, where you're laying down train tracks and connecting station to station. In doing so, you will actually see the landscape transform before your very eyes into a lush, vibrant environment full of life with deeper strategy and puzzle game type scenarios to make you think about how best to run the route, but pretty much deserves a mention based on the visuals alone. One of the reasons why you see so many developers releasing prologue demos is that it is a way to judge interest in your game which can affect decisions like publisher funding and where standalone demos can appear in upcoming releases as compared to the main game, with RunGore having successfully employed such a strategy which makes their early access release of interest. Yes, it is another roguelite deck builder, but most interestingly, has real-time combat as you need to deploy your cards quickly and effectively. It has a nice look as well, and is at least something different in the deck building subgenre. I've been keeping an eye on this game for many years since Dot Age is a roguelite survival city builder title in which you play as the village elder, aka old man yells at cults, as he attempts to use his knowledge to help guide the villagers through all sorts of disaster. I'll admit, I was drawn to the game since it kind of looked like the city building parts of Act Razor, but the developer actually points towards the Settlers series as his inspiration, so it's about managing resources, choosing what to build, and how to adapt to ever changing scenarios. I believe this game is something like 7 years in the making and seems like a labor of love, so if curious, do support this developer. Fellow indie game YouTuber Splattercat basically called Quasimorph his most anticipated roguelike of the year, so if that isn't high praise, I don't know what is, with this grimdark sci-fi traditional turn-based roguelike looking very impressive to me as well. You play as a hardened PMC veteran, having to kill your clones and explore endless space, all in a bid to uncover a mystery that threatens all life. Most interestingly, this is an extraction game, so you're going into missions, getting what you can and then having to make it back to your ship, having inventory management and a bunch of systems which I assume will interact with each other especially in combat, just as a roguelike should have.
Developer Galvanic Games has quite the interesting history, most recently having made the ill-fated Raptured Rejects from 2019, which was a battle royale title set in the Cyanide and Happiness webcomic universe, which was just a weird and wild swing that sold okay but never managed to get the PUBG or Super Animal Royale levels of escape velocity. But I appreciate that they took a chance, with the attention now being on Wizard with a gun. This is a sandbox survival game in which you play as such a character, exploring the magical wilderness, fighting dangerous creatures and uncovering arcane secrets. It does look like Don't Starve to me, and has impressed so far in demos, with this being a Devolver Digital published joint and should have a higher probability than normal of being a good game. I do like that it has co-op support as well and could be fun with a friend. It took 3 plus years for this gorgeous 1-bit black and white pixel art title to go from early access to 1.0, with the pixel art style of World of Horror certainly standing out, and in many ways it's inspired by horror manga artist Junji Ito. It is a roguelite adventure RPG in which the old gods are haunting a cursed seaside town, manifesting in a cult attempting to bring about the end of the world and twisting the minds of the people living there. There are different mysteries or cases to uncover, and in many ways, will result in your character dying as they face off against some horrific monster, and I do remember it being rather tough. In horror game fashion, it is disturbing as well, with one case that I remember from the early access version being a character who was attempting to create real life mermaids by chopping up and, well, you can imagine the rest, so it's not for the squeamish but will be for horror fans. Wargroove is back with Wargroove 2, the sequel to an excellent turn-based tactics title that is the follow-up to a game from 2019 which was basically Advanced Wars in all but name and was great, so I'm excited to check this one out as well. It pretty much looks the same in terms of the pixel art which is great, and adds an affection in the nation of most folk in addition to the 4 factions from the original game plus one from the DLC. There are new commanders, new units, which seem to give each faction more flavour and even a souped up groove system with super powered commander special abilities. I liked this aspect in the original, since it meant that you were encouraged to use your commander in battle, but do also lose the battle if they fall, providing an interesting risk reward judgement that you need to make. Also returning is the very powerful level editor that allows for scripting and story events, so like the original, this should be good as well. Here's a little bit of a swerve since I don't think many of you have heard of Dread Hunter unless you watch every single one of my videos since I've mentioned it a couple of times because this looter shooter action RPG looks pretty sick in which you play as a bounty hunter diving into alien hives to take out the horrors within. The action in this looks awesome and I like the loot aspect, not simply being a regular old top-down shooter so I'm keen on this with more of the best games like Diablo in this video. 